Greetings and salutations, brave hearts and coach mad hatters. It is Tuesday, July 23rd, 2019 at high noon. It is exactly 12 p.m. And so uh, I got uh, a chance to upload my um, my commentary about the last two nights and the and the uh, dreams that or the night visions that I was able to pull into my awakened conscience conscious state and and give a little uh, raw interpretation, if you will, about what's going on um, as far as my current state of affairs at this present moment. I feel a Mad Hatter's rant coming on. So, with me taking up the promise to share my thoughts and my feelings, my intuitions, as well as my sensations as they come up within the very moment. And not that I'll be sharing everything, but I, I did give promise to begin to step outside of my comfort zone and start sharing here we are <laughs> and the reason why it's outside of my comfort zone is because I for one somewhat of a super private person and for two is because me being Capricorn Sun, Virgo Moon, Virgo Rising. I am misunderstood on a regular basis. And thirdly, not everybody can handle my rants. But I am going to stay true to me. And I'm going to be held to the, to, to the level of accountability to share my rants because I am told sometimes that there is a golden chaotic breakthrough that comes, uh, that accompanies such rants. But instead of just giving it to you raw <laughs> so you can feel it, I decided to tap into the opportunity to do a live reading with the prototype, um, the Jolly... Stafford's Oracle Deck Prototype, as well as I am now um, in the midst of one of my most favorite play playlists that is hosted on Spotify. And I want to say that is also linked uh, to the blog. I know, hang on a second, just to make, to make sure that I am speaking properly um, off the blog you can link to the playlist just in case you're curious about the songs um, that are listed it is two hours and 57 minutes long um, you do not have to listen to the entire play playlist but of course I invite you to do so um, this will this particular playlist as well as me pulling from the prototype deck will keep me in line as well as give me a living example of the power that I have begun to tap into to help resolve some of this madness and it strikes me <laughs> it strikes such remarkable chords in me when I do surface up to the mainstreams and take a look around at the fuckery that's going on and how it is that we continue to be so lopsided in how we view things and how we constantly want to encourage people to make these head over heart decisions and leave the heart out of it. We aren't doing much of anything by heart. Or at least we ain't talking about it. 
And then when things start to bubble over or we have to deal with people who are super frightened or, or, or just um, ignorant in their, in their clarity. And I'm not talking about, I'm not talking ignorance as a derogatory, in, in a derogatory sense. No, I mean, knowledge has been purposely hidden from them that truly impacts the way they maneuver in this world. I am at the limit where it is now time to vent and usually about mm, every 90 to 120 days or so, I get the urge to let it pop. <laughs> yeah, let it loose. And because we are in this ultra positive realm, which is also a bit lopsided to me because we continue to stay on the left side of the brain, constantly trying to infuse all this logic, scared to tap into the unknown, scared to tap into the invisible, just running away from feelings that <laughs> have been asking us to give it some attention for some time now. And generation upon generation upon generation we still neglect to understand that there is power in our words, there's power in our command, and that we ought to be leaning into the heart and let the mind follow. But no, our social strata tells us that we have to be ultra competitive and we got to go hard and we got to hustle and we got to get it, get it, get it or take your ass home. What's wrong with going home? What's wrong with being home? Home is where the heart is. Spend some time there. Healing is an individual sport. There is no competition. There is no comparison. We all are on this very highly unique journey to find ourself, to get in tune with our star player. And in some people's regards, it's multiple star players. Stop being afraid of your multiplicity if in fact your inner universe has space for that. Cease with this whole scared to talk to yourself out loud, if need be. And trust me when I tell you, I have said to myself probably 10 times over what it is that I am expressing right now. So I am not excluded from this rant by any means. And what's so amazing right at this particular moment is that I've been getting the urge from my inner voice to be a lot more mm, expressive in the public domain than I was comfortable with doing. So I didn't do it because I was shunning judgment. Well, I give you full welcome. Judge this. <laughs> what I'm saying and I have, no, I have no idea how long this rant is going to go. So stick in with it as long as you possibly can and judge it. Judge it with your most scrutinized characteristics. Judge it. We have officially stepped into new energy that is requiring us to love differently, see differently, feel differently. And everything that you pride yourself in, everything that I had pride myself in is collapsing. 
It is collapsing so you can start over. And I, I was wondering just several months ago, why is it that I was being drawn? And when I say drawn, I'm talking could not think of anything else. Only thing kept popping in my head was clean slate. Clean slate. Starting from a clean slate. And I dibbled and dabbled in a few articles and, and, and conjured up some commentary, but it wasn't hitting home that I was going to have to shuck all that I thought I knew, especially about love and stability and how I cultivate livelihood. And so with that said, I am going to start shuffling and I am going to click on the playlist so we can rock out a little bit. Truly, truly, I invite you to join me on behalf of the blog spot. Mm, listen to me. Slow down. All right. Ooh, I digress for a moment. <laughs> on behalf of the story dot blogspot dot com. In the right pain is the link to Spotify. If you are a Spotify member, log on and rock out while you listen to this, if you will. And so the name of the playlist is called T. Marie. Just as simple as that. Many of the selections on here are my personal favorite. But also, I believe that it tells a story of a multiplex of insights and romantic intellect and tribal honorarium, all sorts of things going on in the playlist. And so right now... Uh, what is playing is mid condition, so fine. And I'm going to use, as I said earlier, I'm going to use the playlist as my PowerPoint. And with that said, we're going to start with one of the stories that are that is so dear to my heart: the story of Bessie Coleman, 1921. And how is it that she had to go to France in order to become a licensed pilot? But after she did that, America wanted to claim her as the first African-American to get a pilot's license. <laughs> go figure. And not only that, she's being honored because she actually had to teach herself how to fly. She had to teach herself, which was attached to a deeply rooted dream that she could not let go because she knew she could fly. All she needed was the credentials to give her the go ahead. But she knew she could fly. Deep down in her heart, she knew she could fly. And she had to go through all sorts of red tape. And uh, I don't even know what there's not a word coming to mind right now, but just the just the 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 um, the shadow conversations of putting roadblock in front of roadblock in front of roadblock in her paths, all types of hurdles that she had to jump through and that's not even talking about the 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 self conversations that I'm sure she had to have with herself to keep her momentum up to make sure she didn't lose sight of what it is that her heart was telling her needed to be done in order for her to meet her greater self How many more of us are going to be stomping out our evolutionary creativity in order to 
hold down employment. How many of us are going to be subjected to formal educations instead of trusting in the serendipitous trails of our intentions to teach ourselves because it's okay to have teachers and this isn't a moment to throw shade to the teaching body at all but I honestly believe that the teacher is not responsible for your learning the teacher is the presenter they they present it to you. It's up to you to latch onto it, explore it, unpack it, investigate it, and see how it fits within your own realm of processing. And it strikes me odd that each and every one of us have not taken up the causality to find ourselves, be more in tune with ourselves, to date and have healthy courtship with ourselves. We really do put that responsibility on someone else. I include it. I am so included in this. And I've had enough of this nonsense. So the first card out, and this is interesting because even as I felt the rant coming on, I, in my goat gruffness, <laughs> made a very matter of fact statement to, 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 the, to my imaginal realm and said, all right, I'm going to pull cards and we're going to see if these cards are going to speak alongside my rant if it's going to support it or give it any type of you know vet and validation to what's going on um because I am at my wits end of even walking the path to get this deck commissioned <laughs> I'm at my wits end yes I'm at my wits end with so many things so with that said, <laughs> the first card out is the Coach Matt under the Coach Matt Hatter's banner. And it says, Seekers of Intrapersonal Light. Journal your key journal your keynotes involving your discoveries. And I must say, it does not take me long before I am in awe with the way my cards come out from the moment that I got the notion to create them. I have charged them quite a bit and have had um, several impromptu readings, whether it was for myself or um, a few very trusted individuals that I have within my circle. I've always been, been amazed at the cards that come out during the moments that they come out. And so with the first card out, it makes me think of Bessie Coleman and her journey to become a licensed pilot and then to later be cheered by America, the governing body that would not give her the license, but now want to claim her as the first African-American trained. And I'm not even sure if I said this, but... Most of her training was in France. And no, I'm not getting ready to get into no type of political conversation or commentary about it. It's, it's just amazing. You, I'll let that sit there and, and, and you unpack it for yourself and see how far you get with that. And just so we clear, this rant is to serve as a chaotic provocateur. We are leading ourselves into something that is called golden, the golden chaos era. Stop being afraid of it. And I'll say it again. What I say to you, I've said to me tenfold. 
Stop being afraid of it. And seeing as that it has been overwhelmingly proven, like Dr. Joy DeGruy say, it's a preponderance of evidence that sits before us, that proves that everything has been told to us in reverse. And what we traditionally deem as evil is not so much. And what we mainstreamly deem as good has been designed that way. <laughs> All by design. All by meticulous design, I'll say. We hardly ever take in account the godchildren of Edward Bernays the so-called godfather of public relations. We very rarely dig into the mystery of group thought and propaganda. We very rarely dig all the way back to the dividing lines between Freud and Jung. Hardly ever do we. Only those that study within psychology will deem whether they are considered Freudian or Jungian. And in my opinion, it should be a household debate. And if you look anything like me, it truly is a household dilemma that we really need not ignore any longer. Psychology 101 should be topic at the dinner table. Everyone has to begin to understand themselves. What an amazing ordeal. Okay, so second card out. Ha, 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 ha. Second card out. Well, look at here. Okay. So it's under the research and development banner. What I like to call journal fitting. And the notion came about uh, because in this highly material world, we will go out and get customized suits and we'll get customized vehicles and customized homes. Hardly ever do we go and get fitted for a journal. <laughs> and as I said in my love letter to self that was posted yesterday, I believe. So go check that out when you get a moment. But um, Journals are a fascinating creature all in themselves. How do you suppose that the elite stay the elite? Because grandpa wrote in his journal. Because grandma wrote letters to grandpa that he stuck in his journals. Great Uncle Wilbert, yeah, while he was out exploring. Okay, card, third card out. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, wow. Okay. So maybe I'll need to apologize to spirit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Please forgive me. <laughs> Rant still continues, but okay. So I'll I'll we'll get back to 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 the appreciation of journals as as a true inherited value. That it's a true inheritance. So third card out. Also uh, under the journal fitting banner, uh, the um. The sub banner is Songversations, and we are to have a moment with the song by Layla Hathaway called A Song For You, which was written by her dad, Donnie Hathaway. Now on this card, because I am a lover of this particular version, it's inviting you to check out the live version when Layla was at the Apollo. And yes, it is up on YouTube. So you can do a simple search to pull that up and experience that. And see if you can find yourself within that song. I was watching an interview with Jill Scott. And I want to say it's some years old now. But, um... Oh my goodness, and I don't want to get off track with trying to find out the details of it. But she was having a conversation with... Oh, this is going to strike me crazy because I really want to give you the the true information. Um, 
But I'll just say that um, she was speaking about her experience while she was in Botswana and making the HBO special, The Number One Ladies Detective Agency, how while she was there on set, she continued to bump into herself. Meaning that she was finally within a community where there was not much division and how even if everybody didn't look alike, there was a, a continuity of feelings and love and, and, and insight and intuition that covered her, blanketed her, that showed her love. So she constantly said throughout the interview that she continued, while she was there, continued to bump into herself. This is what I'm hoping takes place with those that will find themselves pioneering the information that pops up in these cards whenever they become available. I seek for you to bump into yourself and get to know yourself, become acquainted with yourself, meet and greet with yourself. And so myself was all in this song. Has always been. But the way Layla sang it when she was at the Apollo, baby. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> yes. Getting chills just saying that. So maybe it will move you into some type of aha moment or breakthrough. Even in the midst of this chaotic scene of energy we are contending with and I have not been uh, walking this journey this journey I'm still considered truly a novice in the areas of tarot treasures um, as well as spoken commentary teaching teaching <laughs> teaching and lecturing still quite a novice area to the point where I have yet to gain any confidence with this thing and I am very 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 rough around the edges and I probably will stay that way because it's part of my badge of honor as a coach mad hatter I'll say it often and often again I'll say I am not a professional I don't need to be polished as a professional I don't want all my edges polished off I don't fit in that schematic and I'm not going to try to There's something calm within my chaos. And if I try to fit in, I don't want to. I'm just not. <laughs> I'm just not. I'm 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 not. I won't be doing that. I won't be doing that. So back to the to the honorary of, of keeping one's journals. Which takes us back to car two. And I know I jumped it, but I was just so <laughs> Yeah, that was that was incredible. So car two. Under the research and development sub journal uh, sub banner is journal fitting. And it's going to, it's, it's requesting <laughs> a more unconventional approach to how we research and develop self. And so it says, track your zodiac. Keynote your ruling planet's energetic influence. And it says, do this ongoingly for nine months with a high frequency. And a high frequency, in my opinion, is two or three times a week, if not every day. I actually track mine. Um, I find out planetary alignments and certain energies and what it means to my combination of Zodiac. And yes, traditionally and in the mainstream scheme of things, we have only been... Uh, directing our attention to our sun signs. 
when there's a combination of three. And if we think historically, um, even anciently, even astrologically, uh, most power is channeled through a triangle of three. And so your sun, your moon, and your ascending in its combination on any given day is what will unveil certain mysteries that pertain uniquely to you. Fourth card just came out, but I'll hold it for a minute and finish this card out since I hopped it. <laughs> but that's that's all in the energy and and fortitude of a red. There is no formal structure. We just flowing. We just going with it. With that said, there is an increase of your energy's influence, whether it's in retrograde or not, according to the day of the week that it's assigned to. Now, I've been studying this for a while, so I'm going to see. I'm going to test myself now to see if I can give them to you without referring to my notes. So, in my humble opinion, the beginning of the week is Saturday. Saturday is the first day of the week. And it goes in concordance with the first card out in the major arcana of tarot. And so Saturday is Saturn's day. Sunday is the sun's day. Monday is the moon's day. Tuesday is, uh, and I know it's Aries, so I got to think of it. Uh, come on, it's Mars Day. <laughs> Wednesday is Mercury's Day. Thursday is Jupiter's Day. Friday is Venus's Day. Yeah. And then back to Saturday. Did I skip a day? Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Back to Saturday. Now, I know I will have to refer to my notes to tell you the zodiacs that are attached. Because I think two days host two zodiacs. I know Saturday for a fact is Capricorn and Aquarius. And that's because Uranus is... Saturn's daddy, actually, <laughs> which I found out. And I don't know. I'm Well, I'm not going to say I don't know. I want to say I'm still investigating the unfolding um, connections to the bigger story. But in a nutshell, and maybe I'll do a separate recording that when I'm not so fueled with so much energy <laughs> where I can take my time and share with you my discoveries around each day of the week and how it's associated with the uh, planet planet's energetic influences as it channels down into the particular zodiac signs. But card number two is inviting us to get a specific journal and begin to map out those influences as it's in a combination of our zodiac or, our, or, or should I say our zodiac combination. Just like with any encasing that has treasure in it. It has a combination in order to unlock access to said treasures. Your inner life is no different. And it has been strategically designed that way. Only the seeker shall find. Only those tapping on doors shall be let in. Inside your invisible space is a doorway 
and there is a certain combination that within traditional means is oftentimes considered evil. Yeah, I'll just leave it at that. It's just, it's considered evil. With that said, let's step into card four, which is under the pro-personal study, intro to the second power development view. It's under that banner. And it's the enchantress. And I have in parentheses strength, which is of per golden compass. And in order to get closer to the un the 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 locked mystery with oneself in conjunction with this, we are to meditate upon the areas where an increase of self discipline is vital. And we are to call it forward. We are to call it forward. And so I'm going to take a moment to let you know that the song that's playing right now is Grooving Tonight by Brian McKnight. Love this song. <laughs> I just absolutely love this song. And every time I hear it, it makes me want to turn it out and just vibe out. Go dance with yourself. Yeah. Get your groove on. And if you don't dance, then at least get the rhythm and tap your feet. And those that are not able to stand and dance, you can sit and dance. Ow! Yeah, get it. <laughs> Put some play black back in your life. Put some play back in your life. So I'll say, that's a wonderful segue into my hostilities around... Uh, us being breeded as workers and how that particular mindset all by itself leaves so many of those we claim we love, we leave them hanging. We are almost pretty much useless if we are not able to find work, get work, gather work, hustle work, 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 work. And if you look like anything like me, <laughs> How dare you chase a dream? How dare you? You can't even sit in your family's living room and explore the steps of a dream. Ooh, -hoo. car five is out. You can't even sit comfortably with any type of confidence and say, my heart is leading me here. Because if you're not speaking about applying for a job, going on an interview, you know, talk about your performance rating or your 401k or the leave that you have accumulated or, or what, is, what is it that you have in the bank. If you're not talking about none of that, you're not even perceived as a viable member in the family. Like instant embarrassment goes to those, six card out, instant embarrassment goes to those that can't hold a job. Like I hear it all the time. She ain't doing nothing. She ain't working. He can never keep a job to save his life. And we totally be ignoring the historical value that we were bred for workers. The, those that bred us had no idea that new energy was going to be ushered in and that we was going to get a clue that we was actually going to begin investing in our intellectual properties. And that's not even to say that the inventive nature, the ingenuity of it all was always brewing underground. Nobody, them or us, had bet on it bubbling to the surface and sprouting something for Pete's sake. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? 
that the spice of energy was going to, yeah, it totally changed the trajectory. But we are still stuck inside of a mindset that says, if you do not have a job, you are nobody. If you do not have the ability to mainstream income, you are nobody. And you know it's the truth. I don't have to prove that to you. Life proves that to you every day, especially if you look anything like me. And this is no shade to any other cultural denomination. True facts. Like brothers red and blue pill. Yeah, to this day. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Okay, so five, six, and seven. So cards five, six, and seven is out. So I'm a chill shuffling for now. Because I don't want to get too ahead of myself. So card five. Under the pro-personal inner consultation banner. And it says, what's the lead? And then it says, take it. And at the bottom in the keynotes, it keeps us mindful about the moves of a chessboard or and we're in the moves and placements of a chessboard. And it tells us to take on the characteristics of the Cheshire cat in Wonderland. Don't ask me because I was just writing them down as they were as the information was pouring out. I believe, I believe truly that within that combination, it will make sense. It will make sense um, just even if it's, if it's there to shake up the paradigm with how we have been uh, regularly or routinely going at shit, right? Okay, so... Card six. It's under the pro personal study banner, and it is of the major arcana, the high priestess. And it says, Meditate upon your influences of divine feminine. And I am really happy that this card popped out because we are in such influx about what's feminine and what's masculine. And so I think this is my opportunity to shed some light on how I feel in contribution to getting the record straight. Because we are so hyper ignorant <laughs> when it comes to judging someone else's sexuality. And I stand firm on this. And the reason why is because spirit is genderless. And we actually have feminine and masculine within our soul. 50-50. Both resides within the embodiment. Whichever portion is put to the forefront, it is not contingent on the genitalia of the embodiment that we are encased in. And so, <laughs> quite often I will hear the question being asked, about someone being like this gung-ho feminist or the other way around. And it baffles me how we will ignore certain things on a spiritual level. And no, I do not mix and mingle spirituality with religiosity. I do not. It is truly a grand medium between the two. <laughs> when I think spirituality, I think anything without the embodiment. That I have to contemplate it minus the physicality of this realm. And so much content 
and curriculum has been crafted around attempting to explain this. And yes, it gets a bit complex. So complex that I will probably um, halt <laughs> with certain explorations just because it does, it digs quite deep and honestly above my my ledge. I don't know that ledge yet. <laughs> Shout out to Notre Ledge University. I don't know that ledge yet. But thanks to the scholarship of Brother Bobby Hammett, Brother Panic, and Sister Myra Moss, as well as Sister Khadijah. And I'll even throw in Brother Rich. And I'm trying to think. Um, Black Magic 363. Collectively, they have given me a certain foundation of an eclectic nature, which is perfect for me to let you know that the song that's playing right now is You're the Only One by Eric Benet. <laughs> yeah, baby. Sit with that song for a moment. And and it's not even in romantic gesture. What it is, is spirit speaking to you. Giving you some understanding about the fuckery that's going on around here. <laughs> or maybe now that I'm listening to the lyrics while I speak to you, it could be a, conver a conversation of your past, present, and future selves. They want to get to the table and have a sit down. And it truly is not about one or the other. We are now being ushered into the powers of yes and. Yes and. Instead of, instead of either or. There's a divine balance between the feminine and the masculine. They go together. <laughs> We compartmentalize, and that's what's keeping us lopsided. They go together. And at some portions of life, one will lead while the other lay back. And then as the seasons turn or the cycles recalibrate, then the other one may or may not slowly take the lead while the other one lean back. And then, <laughs> if you really want to get immaculate with it, then they may find themselves right there, ebbing and flowing and tangoing and grooving and moving with each other. Now, that's really something to see. But the sixth card out is asking us to meditate upon our influences of the divine feminine. That we give homage to Big Mama. And it, it gives me an intimate confirmation because I have been feeling my nanas and my mom like on, on an unspeakable level. And when I say feeling like a kid, just balled up, just wishing and, and, and just wanting to hug them and laugh with them and feel their embrace. Right now, body tingling, just saying that. Like so bad, just wanted to be the house is pumping and jumping and kids are running everywhere and, and the smell of apple pie is, yeah, invigorating and, and the table is set and, yeah, softly music is playing. And even if the conversations isn't as lighthearted and giggly because there are various conversations going on simultaneously, some of the hard conversations are buffered just by the love that surrounds the environment. It's all part of the ambiance. Home is where the heart is. If any homesteader 
gets a chance to bump into this and you hear it, just know, so mote it be, at the tone of my voice, get back to what it is that you love. Bring the energy, pull the energy back into the homestead. Light it up. Bring love back into the home. Friday night, game night, date night. I'm cool with that. Why can't we throw stuff on the grill and vibe out at the house? Throw the music on. Invite the kids. Date night does not really have to be full of full of romance. But it has to be full of familiarity and acquaintance. In my humble opinion, Thursday night should be library night. Give Jupiter its lucky due. Populate that mind and, and, and pull in that energy so that your comprehension can be kissed and, 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 and loved by Jupiter. Tap into that. Wednesdays is when those, those tough but very much needed conversations can go on. Tap into that energy from Mercury so that you can pull from it and, 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 and gather the right words and the right tone and the right string of commentary to get the record straight. Clear the slate. Monday is not such a and I know I skipped over Tuesday and I'm going backwards but let me just say since it popped into my man my mind Monday is not a bad deal Monday is not a bad deal and the only reason why it sucks is because we have more employees that are dreading <laughs> having to go into the office that politics is such y'all know I like the word such fuckery <laughs> And I'll even follow it up to say, because it's, because, <laughs> if, let me slow down, let me say this, because Friday is Venus, and yes, we are, you know, we are contoured to do the whole date night with Venus, but I'm going to tell you something, baby, yeah, you get with, you get with that, you get with that counterpart on Monday night, <laughs> and you let Luna Love take over, you let her speak to your soul. Nah. <laughs> and I, I'll, you know what? I'll put that out as a Coach Mad Hatter's challenge, especially for all my power couples. Yeah, you reserve Monday night. Reserve Monday night <laughs> and let Luda Love do what she do. And with that being said, the song that's playing right now <laughs> is Backseat by Brian McKnight. Yeah, go on, get down with it. <laughs> See what that do for you. And if, especially if you part of a power couple and you got to go into an office where you are working for somebody else. Yeah, meet up. Meet up with Bay. Yeah. Put the kids to bed early. <laughs> so card number seven. It's under the research and development banner. And it asks a few questions and it says, why am I here? And I have to say, when I first wrote this out, I was so stumped by it. And not stumped by it because I hadn't been studying it or it was new information or new inquiry. Just seeing it in print and seeing it in print in my handwriting because the prototype is all has all been handwritten out. Or just regular index cards. <laughs> it's amazing because when the when the when the force first came in and and my mind said you are about to to create your own deck, I became so intimidated by that. It's like, what are you talking about? Who? There's enough decks out there already. Who can create a deck? <laughs> and it wouldn't let me rest. And it was just like, just get the index cards that you already have in the house. Get your markers and just start writing it down. And so, at the more and more I got comfortable with it the more and more I uh, became enthused and excited about grabbing a card and writing down that which was being flooded into my mind. So why am I here? 
What did I come to this realm to do? What did I want to do when I was a youngster? And I believe that those three questions were grouped like that to bring it back to the power of the divine trifecta. That the triangle lens of three, it really does channel a specific uh, quintessence, quintessential, quintessence, quintessence. <laughs> That was fun. <laughs> but it, it it channels in a quintessence of power. And and not just channeling as in it's being initiated from any place other than within you. That you can literally command it forward or command it backward. You are the conductor of its ebb and flow. And so by contemplating on these questions together, certain things will begin to reveal itself to you. And yes, yeah, so the next uh, song that's now playing is True to Myself by Eric Benet. <laughs> talk about it. Go on, talk about it. I dare you to sit down with somebody and talk about it. <laughs> and I think I'm just going to pull a couple of more cards and let a couple of more songs come through. Um, because interestingly enough, I'm not upset anymore. <laughs> And that's usually how I benchmark my ventilizations, <laughs> if that's even a word. Yeah, I benchmark it by my by my gauge of laughter. If I ain't laughing, we need to talk about it. <laughs> and I've made promises to myself to be free with my laughter. And so that's always been my indication. From that promise forward, that's how I know, and, and most of those around me too, that's how we know we're good when I get to laughing because I'm free with it. I don't withhold my laughter for nothing. It communicates to me when I'm able to laugh. When my laughter is stuck or blocked in some kind of way, yeah, it's time to talk about some shit. <laughs> and even if that means speaking with myself, because I don't drag everybody into my complexities. I don't, yeah, I don't drag everybody into it. And as I've said before, I'm, 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 ah, I am like a supreme private person. In my book, it truly is privileged, need to know tears to this thing. I am not an open book. And most often those who try to judge me by my cover get it wrong. I am truly a adventurous mystery. <laughs> I'm a mystery novel. <laughs> so only those well read would even have the patience to even try. <laughs> yes, I'm true to myself. Okay, so the eighth card. Oh, two cards popped out. Didn't even realize that. Okay, so eight cards, eight, nine, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, eight, nine cards, eight, nine. All right, let's see here. Ha, look at there. So under the pro personal study intro to the second power view. And interesting. Also major arcana per golden compass trajectory. Ha, the death card. And it's so fitting for what's going on right now because, as I've said earlier when we first got started, that we are being challenged to love differently and to die to our old selves. To begin cultivating a new way of loving each other and, and courting each other and dealing with each other. A new vocabulary or, or summit of vocabulary is being ushered in with this new energy that is challenging us to not only speak to ourselves in a different way, but use uh, keen awareness and focus to how we can synthesize our tones of voices.
And so the instruction or the keynote of this card is meditate and mediate. Meditate and mediate. And I'll get to what that, I'll, I'll, I'll unpack that in a moment. So meditate and mediate and or mediate upon your inner, over, and understandings of death's presence, honor, and divine trifectas. Okay, so what does that really mean? So to meditate or mediate, because there are times when you will have to stand as the mediator for one who is dying to their old self and to stand as the pillar of encouragement to help see this process through. Dying to one's old self is not an easy task. And we are more comfortable with shunning and shaming than we are with shining and strengthening and sharpening. Ah, so let me just real quick. Haha. <laughs> so the song that is now playing now on the ocean by K John. I love this song. Yes. Everything is passing you by. Yeah, you dying to the old ways of things. My ship has gone and sailed away. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Honor death's presence. You will die to yourself multiple times, but a new you is promised. A new, a, new, a new self is promised. You got to know your ship is coming in. Just past the horizon. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a little MCing right now. <laughs> so you know I'm going to have to give Spirit its true honorarium after this recording. Because yeah, not only has... The weight been lifted up off of me where I'm not cranky pants anymore. Just the way that the songs and the cards have blended in to do its thing. I am even more convinced that this is something that I must hit the town with. I must paint the town. Red and blue makes purple. <laughs> Y'all know I am a Notre Dame University student, right? <laughs> Them Twin Towers. <laughs> Them being free with their cloth and being free with their lecturing components and how they set up academia. They set up, they really truly do set up academia for the Coach Mad Hatter. For those that, um, and not just exclusively, but it really is an inclusive, it's an inclusive summit of learning. And it taps into all types of situations dealing with this urban living. So if you are not familiar with them, do yourself a favor and check them out. And yes, they are on YouTube. Um, I want to say they also have um, ktlmedia.com. They both are on Instagram. But I don't know the I don't know the uh, I don't yeah right off the top of my head but that should be enough to get you started and on YouTube is Know the Ledge Media as well as their brother KT the Arch Degree and his adorable wife the Oracle yeah check them out check them out you will get yourself a priceless not only. Uh, realm of content, but they also are well read and they are free with throwing out book titles. And I think if they are still handling it, where you can um, you can order um, this inclusive list, this exhaustive list of book titles that between the whole crew and Mama Pill. Oh my gosh, I love her. I love her. Yes, I do. But all of them, 
So the books that they've read or learned from or, or that they highly recommend is in this list that you can order from them. And, and you can get it and begin to stock up your bookshelf and yeah, invest in you. And a lot of them, a lot of the books that are on the list has a lot to do with uh, better acquaintance and, 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 and reviving the courtship with self. So I highly recommend you check that out. With that being said, when one meditates upon the presence and the honor of death, whether it is physical, spiritual, mental, financial. Just know that it's a phase of transition. We've been groomed to believe that death is final. In my opinion and what I've been studying, I beg to differ. Something totally different. What it is, especially the physical, because that's what we're most fearful of. And that's by design, people. Please, please, please know that the fear that has been embedded in us with regards to this physical thing that they want to attach to death is more so a transition of outer embodiment. Now, the body has to stay here within the realm in which it was produced in order to migrate through this realm on a certain level, you need a human suit. And so the soul gets encased in the human suit so that it may have the experience of this realm. Now, many will call it the prison planet. As far as I'm concerned, I'm not 100% with that, but I get it and I understand exactly why, um, especially when we speak on a, uh, on a level of mythos. I truly get it, but I think that there's more to it that I just haven't bumped into that would solidify how I truly feel about that. But even with that, this body suit belongs to this realm. And that the loosening or the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The, um, <clears throat> the, uh, moving out <laughs> of the flesh suit does not mean the death of the spirit of the soul. And what I'm finding out is that it's really truly all about experience and memory. And so all of that that you accumulate within your memory bank goes with you. And we've been groomed to believe that the physical bank account is more important than the emotional and intellectual bank account. Now, that's not to say that you do not want to make sure that in certain terms, those that are in conjunction with your life is not left <clears throat> somehow uh, stable so that they can go on in your absence so that they will not have to experience certain ripples with regards to you no longer being embodiment. But that's not guaranteed to everyone. But love is. Romantic intellect is. Family camaraderie is. Shared intuition is. Grandma, grandpa, you know, great uncle, great auntie, and I'm just randomly just, you know, pulling, but really anyone who has kept the due diligent process of journaling, that's an immaculate inheritance as well. Especially if 
those that you lead them to already are are upon the journey of self mastery and they are they consider themselves wisdom seekers like they are tapping into the mission to unfold the human mystery yes your journals your contemplations your discoveries your book titles the times and the dates when you discovered this that and the third that is quite invaluable irreplaceable actually Especially if you take it from the virtual world. And I know we do this whole, the, the, the next, um, or the upcoming, or <laughs> the evolution will be digitized. Now, I'm with the evolution won't be televised. Oh, the evolution is digitized. There we go. But I am the one, the, the evolution is not going to be digitized either, in my humble opinion. It's actually going to unfold within the collective conscious of those that are adhering to the ushering of this new energy. It's actually going to unveil itself within that, 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 that golden line and called chaos. It's actually going to be in the midst of dispelling this thing we call complied consent. Venturing into this thing we call individuality and uniqueness. That's where the seeding and the cultivation of the evolution is taking place. So in my opinion, it won't be televi televised or digitized. Anything that we upload into this virtual space is easy access for those that we have no idea exists. Yes, lurking easy, lurking, lurking made easy. But if we get back to the primal sense of keeping record and that you literally have to be inside my physical zone in order to take homage of what it is that I'm thinking and feeling, by way of my physical handwritten journals, that's some value right there, baby. That's some customized, unreplicated, yeah. Those are the true diamonds in the rough. And now that I think about it, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine cards. We're going to leave it there just for the honorarium of completion, as well as to symbolically give strength to the closing out of that which we are considering eclipse season or this particular eclipse season and so that we can birth into a new season um, with less fear of, of certain things like the energetic forces and retrogrades and stuff like that and I'll say uh, again my Capricorn Sun Virgo Moon Virgo Rising that combination, both of my ruling planets are in retrograde right now, which is another reason why I just, you know, hesitated getting on and putting my feelings out in the public domain and this, that, and the third. But I invite you again, judge it. <laughs> Go ahead, judge it. I invite you to, in I, yeah, judge it. I'm no longer going to be ducking, duck, ducking and dodging judgment. And I don't think you should either. Remember, we are ushering into a phase where we have to face up with fear and dispel this thing called implied consent. So with that, this is the last card out. Card number nine. And it's under the Coach Matt Hatter's Challenge Banner. And it says, engage in an immaculate conversation with someone special. You can only speak about love, fortune, and dreams. 
And because I was ranting and raving so much and the card has fell out for a while, I didn't even really pay attention to it. That is it all in itself an immaculate way to close out this rant. And I'll add this. <clears throat> when I first wrote this card out, it was in mere frustration of having these small talk ass conversations where we spend so much time talking about the crap that don't matter. And that the moment someone talks about love, fortune, or dreams, we clam up. Like it's so hard for someone to say, I love you. I love you. And that does not have to be in a romantic context. And I'll say all day long and twice on Sundays. Love and romance are two separate entities all in themselves. Yes, are they co-joined? Yes, they are. But they're also standalones. I can love you without knowing you. Because there's something that's called like-mindedness. There's something that's called familiarity in spirit. In some instances, just knowing your Zodiac combination, yeah, huh, my love immediately flows to you. For one, I know it's a jungle out there. For two, because I am becoming a more studied novice in the areas of astro alchemy and this thing that we call metaphor and symbols and signs, you know, I'm, I'm becoming a lot more acquainted with the knowledge. Those that I seek, as well as those that I bump into, when I find out that your curiosity is drawing you to those realms, just as mine is drawing me to those realms, I immediately send you love and light for reinforcements. I immediately go in and start speaking to the spiritual realm where I ask for certain spiritual warriors to be at your beck and call to be able to help you maneuver through this thing. And we seem to get blockage when it's time to say, I love you. And I really think that that has uh, a lot to do with our conditional mentality as well as the historical um, atmospheres that we've been groomed into believing that has had us withhold our loving expressions and accommodating gestures. And those that look like me have been attached to the, to the label of a deaf culture. And quite honestly, if we would begin to look at death a little differently, it would actually be an honored label to have. If we really get back to the ancient roots of things, it's actually a immaculate label to have. Because there is no other cultural denomination existing on this planet at this day and age that has had more death. By this time, we really should be used to it. But yet and still, it, I even baffle people to this day when I say I've uh, crafted, I've composed my own obituary. I've, I've crafted my own death program. couple, you know, people here and there be like, oh, okay. And they will ask questions so that they can learn more. But most, what did you do that for? <laughs> oh my God, does that mean you're going to die soon? You know, all that crazy shit. I don't know. <laughs> do you know when you are? Like, who knows? But in the event, especially now that I'm learning new things, I don't want no cookie cutter program. It's not going to do the sh my struggles any justice. And I wrote it in the first person. So those that partake in it, it will be as if I'm speaking to you and taking this supreme opportunity for me to leave a little bit of me with you.
I don't want somebody else right. It's t- it, that is such a personal opportunity to lay it out. Especially seeing as that we keep them. I know those within my family tribe, like, they, yeah, they have an entire particular file that is full of, of all the programs from every funeral they've ever attended. If we get out of this spookism, that's one element within the departure and celebration of life that truly could be honored and 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 serve as a true keepsake. And I will shamelessly plug to say that I am helping. Um, I'm here of and at service to help those who want to venture in to that realm to begin composing their own. So, and 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 then you will not have to begin writing immediately. What you do is begin to gather certain things inside of a file and start to silently and intimately contemplate it. You'll get a journal that's specifically for this particular activity, and all that comes up, surface up. You write it down. You you keep it all together, and you will work your way up into the moment where you begin to break print and then many revisions and drafts will come after that too so it really is a walk in progress it's a work in progress it's a walk in progress until you reach the uh the 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 moment where you can look at face to face and say i'm pleased with this and then that's when it goes into its final zone And I'll close out with this. We, me included, me, we, which I extend honorarium to the great Muhammad Ali for even bringing forth the poem. And so it's been cataloged as amongst the shortest poems ever. Me, we. And you can do a simple research that will give you the backdrop to how the poem came about and why they are considering it a poem. And I really believe that's because he was such a rhythmic lyricist in his own right. He was truly what I would consider a poetic justice. So, me, we ought to take in serious account to bring sexy back to the home. Get the fuck out of these clubs. Bring homage back to the home and fire up that kitchen and host these supper parties. Bring the love and energy back into the home so that the heart chakra can truly start to heal instead of fight with us. The heart chakra right now, the energies that are associated with the heart chakra right now is in such dismay because they, and I say they, talking about all of the celestial energy that has to go into convincing us to pay our hearts some damn attention. And the heart factor does not only have to consist of that which is romance. And all while doing all of that, carve out safe spaces for yourself and those that you love to dream a little bit. Even in the midst of the chaos, allow them the free range to confidently share their dream and and then immediately take up the cause or make the decision whether you going to become a cooperative in that effect. Begin appointing yourself as the dream weaver of your tribe. Take honor in that. Start gathering scholarship that you can share with people that 
endows the permission to dream and then set forth towards that. Now you don't have to fluff it up because it owns it it handle it 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 is responsible for its own weight. And so some will may some may have to clear out certain clutter in order for them to even begin to associate themselves with the dream. And sometimes that takes a while. Sometimes that's really a tough ordeal. But as a dream weaver, especially as an ambassador dream weaver, you will truly stand in the gaps as the mediator during these times because they will have to die to certain variations of themselves in order for them to lighten up and reach for that particular dream. It is not an easy task, which hence the reason why it's such low, you know, it's such low with, with love and, and vibratory prosperity. But it can be done. Not gone, just unfold it. Not gone, just unfold it. The dispelling of certain mantles must be done in order for certain other things to rise. We have to declutter and clear it out. Appoint yourself to, to mediate and stand in the gap of these processes. And maybe like dial back on the, on the, the propping up of this employee, employee, employer, employee mindset. Because truly some of us really did come here to be the dream weavers. To help folks usher in that energy that will strengthen them to go after that which dance inside the corridors of their head and their heart. And that we make way for that. And so with all of that said, <laughs> I will conclude this rant. If you have made it to this point, I think you are truly a brave heart in my book. And you might as well, <laughs> if you hadn't considered it yet, see if you identify as a Coach Mad Hatter. Because if you've lasted this long, you just might be. And if you are, I invite you to tap in and explore that energy. Because the Underground Railroad, especially with regards to emotional intelligence, is now firing it back up. The dots are being highlighted. We are now dropping off from the mainstream. Classroom is now inside the home. We are becoming protectors of the imaginal and the imagineering, the magic, the imagineering processes of taking full advantage of this new energy that is being bestowed upon us. So thank you for your presence. And I wish you well. <laughs>